Hello, uh, short video on the Eonon UA13 Plus and in particular how to improve telephone call quality by disabling the internal microphone on this unit. Now I've previously made a video on the 7 inch double DIN UA13 um, and I showed in that video how to disable the, the microphone on that unit. The UA13 Plus has a 10.1 inch screen, um, so it has the same basic double DIN size uh, base unit at the back here. It's 180 wide by 108, 100 millimeters high, and it's about 80 millimeters deep. Uh, but rather than having the seven inch screen, it has a small gimbal and a 10.1 inch touch screen. Um, the touch screen can be tilted side to side and up and down and it also slides up and down by about 40 millimeters. So very flexible installation uh, options. It features the same basic motherboard as the Double DIN UA13 7 inch. It's a uh, rock chip 4 core processor, the 3562 and wireless Android Auto, wireless CarPlay. And it seems to work well. It's a low cost unit, but the, the music sound quality is good. Um, the screen's responsive and it reliably connects wirelessly to Android Auto and, and Apple CarPlay. And in fact, a couple of weeks ago, we installed one of these in a Toyota GT86. Um, and it's a very nice unit, very nice to use. Um, nice, nice clear screen. In common with a lot of these cheaper Chinese Android head units, there's a problem on phone calls with the audio quality. Um, the, the issue seems to be a lack of noise cancelling and uh, relatively poor signal processing. The situation is made worse by the fact that there's a front panel microphone and there's also the option for a plug-in external microphone on the rear of the unit through one of the wiring harnesses. And the issue there is that both of those are connected together in hardware. In other words, although there are options in the factory settings to enable the front or the rear microphone individually, in actual fact, it doesn't matter what setting you choose in the factory options, uh, both of those microphones are connected together. And the situation with this unit is actually a little bit worse than with the seven inch double DIN because the, the small condenser microphone that's mounted on the uh, top left of the screen here, it tends to pick up um, road vibrations as, as you drive the car over bumps and so forth. The screen inevitably wobbles very slightly and uh, all the knocks and clunks are picked up by the microphone. So if you're trying to have a conversation with somebody who's using one of these units, um, there's a lot of background noise. So the solution is to use a, a reasonable quality external microphone, a, buy yourself a Lavalier microphone and plug it into the external mic input. And you need to disable this internal microphone. Okay, And the way to do that is you disable it in hardware. In other words, you cut the track that goes to it. And I'm going to explain how to do that. Um, what we essentially do is we detach the screen from the unit, which is quite easy to do. And then we remove the this front screen backing panel. It's a plastic backing panel. It just has four small screws retaining it. We just ease the, the, the back of the unit away from the screen. And then we cut the track to the condenser microphone. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So I've got the uh, the unit face down. I've put the screen on some plastic. It still has its screen protector on, but nonetheless, I've put some plastic underneath. So the first thing we need to do is to disconnect the base unit from the screen. We slide the two plastic catchers apart and the base unit will slide off. And then we need to detach the umbilical cord coming from the base unit um, to, the, to the front screen. So we just need to remove this uh, cable clamp. There's two small crosshead screws there, so I'll remove that.
and remove the, the cable clamp. And then we've got the cable connector and what we do is we squeeze the tabs each side together so we squeeze in and just ease it back. Okay, and now we've detached the base unit uh, from the screen and obviously we need to do that as well when we're doing the installation in the vehicle. The next thing to do is to remove the plastic backing piece from the screen and that's just held on by four small black screws, two on each side. So we'll remove those. So four of those tiny screws out of the way. And then we basically just need to pry up this plastic uh, rear panel, which is a fairly tight fit inside the screen housing. So basically loosen it with your thumbnail and it will just lift up. And then we just need to slide it back by a couple of centimeters. Okay. We don't need to detach it completely and the top of the screen is nearest to the camera and at the left hand side there you'll see there's a small subboard and at the top of that subboard where I'm pointing with the screwdriver we've got the condenser microphone which is soldered into this green board so there's two uh, solder pads right at the top of that board um, connected to the condenser microphone the condenser microphone just sits on that board and points toward that small hole in the front panel uh, so what we need to do is just um, disconnect the condenser microphone from the rest of the circuitry and we're going to do that by carefully cutting uh, the track to it. So I've, uh, I've now cut the track and again I'll drop in a close-up still picture. Uh, so you can see exactly where I've cut it and I'm going to replace the rear panel so the this plastic rear panel just presses into place it's held in by four screws now when you uh, refit those screws tighten them up very gently they're, they're low torque they just go into the aluminium screen housing there's no need to uh, tighten them anything other than, than very gently just nip them up so they contact the, the plastic housing and retain it. So we'll put those four screws in. And when we've put the four screws in, we'll pop the cable back into place and replace the cable clamp. So having refitted the cover to the rear of the screen and the umbilical cord and so on, we pull the screen catches apart and we can slide it uh, onto the base unit. Okay. Now Eon supply the unit with a, one of these pigtails and it has the connector for the external microphone, this black connector here. Uh, as standard, Eon on supply one of these small, sort of small mouse type microphones. I think they're supposed to um, stick by this adhesive pad onto the top of the steering column shroud. They're not particularly good. They're supposedly have some noise cancelling characteristics, but I, I've not found them particularly successful. Um, you're much better off getting something like this uh, Lavalier microphone, a higher quality mic. Um, you can buy these off Amazon. Um, I got two for about £15. This is a Callowan branded one and it does seem to give much better performance. You obviously have to make your own mounting arrangements up on the headlining, top of the A-pillar or whatever. The external microphone connector will take either a standard um, two-pole connector, um, so-called TS, tip and shroud, or it will take a three-pole connector like this 
Um, so this is a so-called TRS tip ring shroud, but it will not take um, one of these four terminal TRRS connectors. So if your Lavalier mic comes with a four terminal connector, it won't work if you plug it in to the head unit. You will need to get an adapter. You can get a TRRS to TRS connect connector. In other words, a four pole to three pole or a four pole to two pole adapter. Uh, not particularly expensive. But taking this simple step of disconnecting the internal mic and fitting yourself uh, a better quality external mic will improve quite considerably the phone call quality on these units. It's not gonna be as good as one of the big brands, a Pioneer or a Kenwood or a Sony, and it's not gonna be as good as one of the newer um, Chinese head units, the, the very expensive ones, the 300 pound plus units, but it will improve the performance of this low cost unit, and make it just about acceptable to make phone calls from.